Hello, everybody. Welcome to our next edition of um, our series of webinars here at MAPAL. My name is Harry Bennett. I'm a global account manager um, here at MAPAL, and I'm joined by Heather Linden Krona. Good going, Harry. Cool. Perfect. Um, and Peter is our chief office director at MAPAL and is also uh, the founder of the compliance application that we're going to chat to you more about today. How are you, Peter? Fine, thanks. And you? Yeah, really well, thanks. So we'll introduce ourselves first of all. Um, my name's Harry. As I said, I'm the global account manager here at MAPAL. Uh, and my background spans across about 20 years of hospitality. So creating, launching, operating successful hospitality concepts, you know, working in bars, restaurants, um, and I just have a real passion for it, a real passion for learning, development, and the industry itself. Um, and I love working with clients to work in new solutions um, and help them with solutions on, on, on solving the issues through hospitality technology. Uh, and another thing just to mention is I did head up the drinks focus side of Hospo Live. Um, so when we went into lockdown, we put together a, um, a, an initiative essentially to, to engage hospitality workers um, throughout COVID, throughout lockdown. Um, so very, very proud of that. And um, yeah, good to be here today. Peter, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. So Peter Lindenkrona, as you so correctly pronounced, Harry. So I'm Thanks. more of an IT nerd background, uh, working uh, with uh, my own companies and in other companies, uh, but kind of joined the, the not so dark side of hospitality. Uh, I really like um, seeing hospitality people use what I'm a part of building. So that's kind of my driver. I'm not a hospitality person from the from the start, but I really come to like the the market and that environment. So I've been spending in, in hospitality and retails the like 20 years. Uh, so that's my background. Great. So compliance, <clears throat> what exactly is the idea? Yeah. So uh, it actually came from my background being running around in a lot of stores and other places. I was working for a point of sale, a software company. And this was like uh, 10, 15 years ago. So the only IT that was kind of present uh, in a, a restaurant or in a, a retail store was, was actually the point of sale of the till. The rest was just pen and paper. And as an IT guy working in finance before, I was kind of confused about where are all the tools? Hmm. Um, people like, yeah, we have the tools. We have the pen and paper, right? Uh, so uh, that was basically a starting point for a compliance solution was it has to be a better way to support all those people than just pen and paper. Uh, pen and paper is, of course, it's, it's a great thing. You know, it's easy to use, or at least it was. Uh, current generation, uh, 30 years younger than me, are more like into phones, but at that time it was the, the go-to solution. Sure. Uh, it's easy to change, but there's also a lot of problems that IT is quite good at handling. So that was the starting point for, for compliance. Like, uh, you see this big dashboard to all the pen and paper, could we get that in one place mm -hmm. instead of spread out? that would really help the people on the floor. That was the, the background, basically. Great. And what, what are some of the, the biggest problems that you've seen dealing with pen and paper? Yeah, it's, um, if you would have asked me like five years ago, maybe eight, it would have been only the problems that you kind of know of. That, you know, it's, uh, it's very hard to send out updates from headquarters because once you send out uh, a change, it can it kind of have to send out a new change immediately after, and it, you're never in sync. So you can't really control or give people the right tools to do the right things. Uh, yep. And it's also really tricky to follow up. You have to be at, on the site to follow up, which is you know not ideal. Yeah. Uh, and nowadays, I think also the problem is that uh, a lot of people working in hospitality um, they're not that good at pen and paper and Excel anymore. They're very good at TikTok and Instagram, but mm -hmm. you know, pen and paper is not their thing anymore. So it's actually even worse with pen and paper now than it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I completely agree. And um, what, so, so what sort of size of businesses do you feel like the compliance application is best suited to? Yeah, I think it's um, when we our, our idea was to to target. Um, uh, or help like multi-site businesses that deliver food and service. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was about getting all the pieces together in one simple to use app. So, uh, you know, people already have uh, procedures and routines in place for food safety. They have for operational tasks, uh, they usually have audits. So all of that is kind of established. 
Uh, and they maybe even have autom automation like uh, checking temperatures of coolers and freezers automatically, but they're not connected. So it's still, even if it's digitized, it's still digitized in different places. So you still have the pen and paper problem that's scattered. Yeah, so, sure. So, so in terms of number of sites, I think it's not really about the number of sites. It's about how mature your processes and your ways of working are. And that's usually when you have one site, I mean, you can control everything. You, you, you spend a lot of hours on the floor. You can see and can do everything. When you grow, uh, you, get more, you get more like limited in time. So five, six, seven, ten sites uh, at that time. I mean, it's hard to, to be everywhere. And that's where a, a solution starts to bring some real value. So I think it's maybe a long answer to a short question, but I'd say 10, 15 yeah. sites, something like okay. that. Great. Brilliant. And I mean, it all sounds very, very theoretical, right? <clears throat> and of course, you mentioned at the start that you are actually an, an IT guy. Um, yeah. And I guess that I'm an ops guy. Um, and the question uh, for me is, you know, what does it all mean? So, so why, don't we, why don't we look into that um, a little bit? Um, so Espresso House, um, many people that are watching this webinar may not have seen this brand before. They might not know who Espresso House are. Um, I have spent a lot of time in Sweden. My partner is actually Swedish. So I'm lucky enough to have visited Espresso Houses. And I know that um, I'm very aware that Espresso House is on almost every corner in Scandinavia, yeah. you know, similar yeah. to maybe the likes of Costa or Pret, these places in the UK. Um, so tell us a bit more about them and, and tell us how they use the tool. Yeah, uh, it's it's one of our oldest uh, customer. I think we started to work with them in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, there's it's a fast growing uh, company. Uh, when we started, there were about 180 uh, coffee shops in Sweden, so 180, and now they're about 550 in wow. uh, four countries: I think Germany, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland. Five, yeah. So so they're growing about 300 uh, percent over that time span. And uh, w when they went to this kind of expansion journey, it was really important for them to kind of, you know, of course, expand quickly, but not, uh, you know, keep the costs down while doing that, especially on the kind of headquarter level um, and also so secure the brand standard. So if you have that establishment rate, you really need to make sure that each opening is kind of really opens an espresso house and it feels like an espresso house the first day. So okay. that was their, their big challenge, just accelerating while keeping quality so that was their, their challenge uh, and of course they had all their procedures ways of working were quite established so it was easy for us you know just digitize what they had which yeah. is a good a good starting point <laughs> yeah absolutely. Uh, and so and they already did you know they of course they did the food safety stuff they did the opening and closing checks so they did the, you know check campaigns uh, um, planograms, things like that, but they also have a very uh, good way of auditing. You know, where each each person, regardless of their position in the company, are visiting the sites on a regular level. I think it's quarterly. So the CEO does uh, coffee shop audits. So does the item manager, and yeah. so does the purchase manager. So they they do all that together, and the audits are done in our tool, and the results are immediately available to everyone, and all the action points. Are kind of sent through the system to the coffee shop manager so they can track uh, in real time that all the things that they find are fixed according to their standards uh, yeah. so they have a really a kind of it it's, it's not really the system it's the way they work and yeah. also that they incentivize it so uh, we measure what we call compliance score like how well do you perform your tasks and that actually affects this uh, girl barista salary uh, wow. according to if they execute according to the the guidelines it's very interesting and if and i guess then if you could select sort of one thing um that espresso house did really well what would that be uh, it would be like uh, it's actually their uh, cfo or cio at that time uh, was also an it nerd uh, uh, likes data a lot so they're very data driven uh, yeah. but they really you know it's not for headquarters for everyone so it's about everyone has access to the same checklists, uh, the mm -hmm. same results, the same data, and actually tying that together in one operational way of working with the system, the metrics, and the content. It sounds easy, but it's not yeah. no. <laughs> to get that to work together. I think that's the their success story. Brilliant. 
Great. And then if we move on to another one of your clients, Bastard Burgers, um, again, probably not a name that people in the UK know. Um, I think Sweden is, is, is from, from what I've seen in my travels anyway, Sweden is full of, of gourmet burger joints. Um, yeah. Another reason why I love to visit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but tell us more about Bastard Burgers themselves and how they specifically use the compliance application. Yeah, they had a, a bit, bit of a different starting point. Uh, Express House, you know, they were over 180 sites. So, so they had, I mean, for them, it was just the next step on their journey. Um, Basta Burgers were more, we got in touch with them very early. I think there were four restaurants or maybe five. Oh, really? uh, so it's really, you know, when you get that kind of contact, uh, it's like, okay, are you sure that we are the right supplier for you at this time? Because yeah. you're managing four sites. Is it worth to, to build all these support tools and everything? It, it might just be better to, you know, do what you do and do it well. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we were talking there, but the, the management team of Basta Burgers uh, are really experienced uh, from other, you know, high growth uh, multi-site businesses. Uh, so they were like, I understand you, Peter, but we're not a five site uh, restaurant. We're a 50 site uh, multi-brand, but we're not there yet. So the goal is clear. We're going to be 50 quite quick. Okay. Uh, and that means to do that growth, the, the earlier we, you know, put everything in one system, establish the way of working, establish the audits, mm -hmm. uh, set the standards. It's actually easier to do when there are a few sites because the change management effort is very you know, simple. It's just handing out four phones yeah. and they start using it. And then they push the pedal after that. So they kind of set up a, what do you call it, a digital playbook or a you know, point of sale, our compliance solution, uh, purchase, things like that from the beginning. Maybe it was a bit too much at that point, but they were really, the expansion was, uh, you know, really the thing for them. So once they had that in place, then they accelerated. Yeah. And we signed with them, they started using us in 2018, so maybe 2019, five sites, and now there are 70 sites. Wow. Uh, so that's a 1,400% growth or something like that <laughs> over a couple yeah. of years. Uh, and they actually opened their first uh, burger joint in Manhattan uh, two months ago. Cool. So, uh, so they're really expanding. And I think uh, just having that set, that concept, you know, and the, the, the brand promise or whatever you call it, regardless if it's food safety or opening hours or everybody has the right uh, apron and the right T-shirt, uh, having that really set and then just m m really follow up on that. Yeah, it uh, really supports the scalability, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's that's their what they did really good, I think, was to define the brand and then execute on the brand and just do that. Cool. <clears throat> Great. And again, you know, if you could select one thing that they do really well with the tool, what, what would you say that would be? Um, I think it's um, it's the keep it simple. Uh, and, and that's it's, I mean, it's, everybody says that, but they're really you know, keeping their, the customer promise and the offering and the menu, uh, it's, they stick to what they do very well. Uh, and uh, since they do that, you don't have to change that much in terms of uh, how things are done. Uh, so they can, you know, adjust along the way, uh, but they don't introduce new things on each restaurant. It's kind of very centralized. Uh, they try it out. They do a small change in our software to see if that works, and then they roll it out, and then take the next one. So really structured in the way they, you know, constantly change, but they do it very controlled and from a very defined uh, template, you can say. So uh, that has also helped them a lot when it comes to recruiting. You know, a lot of they have a kind of a cool brand, a bit of a punk. Uh, yeah. They signed up with some local artist from the north of Sweden. You know, they're really good on building the the brand towards customers or guests, as well as people working in a Basta Burger. So okay. but when someone is recruited as young, they don't have to be super, don't have to be so experienced in, in service, uh, but, but they are very good using their phones. <laughs> so yeah. it's like the TikTok generation. So they get like the phone. Uh, this is what you're supposed to do. If you do this, you can kind of spend the rest of your time on your guests. Yeah. And, so it's and familiar. That's, Feels yeah. Familiar. That, that, that's what they expect because the, the people they employ, they you can carry around like a supercomputer in their pockets with their iPhones. So um, that's that's their private life. And then when they move to, to work, uh, they don't want to downgrade. <laughs> they want the same yeah, experience no, at that. work. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, that's really cool. 
And those, I mean, great. Those are those are great examples, and and I t totally get that. You know, it makes complete sense to me. Um, but if you were to summarize everything, you know, how does how does that look? Yeah, it's. Um... I'll try. Of course, each each business is different, uh, and that's the whole idea with this system that it can kind of adjust to how each brand works because each brand is unique. But if I try to summarize it, this is a, once again a bit of a data nerd graph, maybe. But on on the left side of this, where it says thirty uh, percent, that's the start of a typical uh, rollout for us. So in this case, each of the green dots on this graph is a specific location or a site mm -hmm. uh, at a certain day that has a certain compliance score, meaning that if it's 100%, they've done all their tasks for that day. If it's 0%, they've done none of their tasks for that day. So, yeah, sorry, Harry? No, no, that makes sense. No, I, yeah. I was going to ask, how do you generally measure that ROI then once, once the compliance is in place? Yeah, it's um, uh, just let me explain the graph and I can go into that because sorry, I think yeah. it, that's the, kind of the basis for it. Sure. But uh, on the left side of that, so that's when we usually when we launch, it's like, uh, you know, we send out an email, uh, a quick five point guide, maybe a short video clip that shows how the app works. Uh, and then it's like uh, log in and start use it. Uh, and that's usually not a problem because people are, you know, they know how mobile apps works. So uh, as you can see on the left side where it says 100%, uh, like something around 20% of the sites they just start using it right away and they're 100% from day one. Uh, but then you have the majority, uh, you know, the, it doesn't go that quick. Maybe it's 0%, they start using it, uh, but it starts to pick up. Uh, and then a bit into the process, you can see that uh, the top 100% is dipping. So it actually looks like it gets worse. Uh, and, and that's the effect of uh, the, the region manager's audits actually visiting the sites, yeah. measuring, uh, the quality of uh, the local checks yeah. uh, and and that since that's done in the same system you can see the result of the audits in the same place as uh, the self checks and then the area manager can have a nice talk with the site manager and say oh i can see that you were 100 percent the last uh, four weeks but when during my audit I, I i saw that there were kind of dirty back of house and you haven't really checked this and that uh, and that means that you know people start to get a bit more honest. Uh, and so the curve dipping at the top is when honesty kicks in. So, yeah. oh, it's kind of uh, maybe I should be honest instead of just saying yes. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's very difficult to be 100%, right? Yeah, and it's, you can't really trust the site that is 100% over time because that's yeah. not really doable. I mean, <laughs> it's never 100%. Uh, something happens and someone is sick and you get like uh, two... Uh, 200 football fans coming in. I mean, you don't really focus on the compliance for that day. Uh, so you, you never have 100%. And then at the same time, you see uh, on the downside of this where things start to pick up, it's because everything is visible. So you will see that in my district or my region or my uh, group, I'm on, the, I'm on the bottom two out of 10. Uh, and nobody wants to be in the bottom no. of that uh, top list. So it kind of generates this behavior that okay you need to be honest but you also need to do your things uh, and that's when the kind of roi kicks in is in the uh, at the end of this graph where you get kind of a consistent execution of everything yeah, uh, okay. your food safety your campaigns uh, you have like the same view when you do audits you can see that okay you got a seven to eight percent score in your audit and it actually matches what you what you think about your site as well yeah, I was going to yeah. say you can start to really measure it, right, and actually see what the yeah, and act upon the things that you know the dropouts or the you know the real problems, the green dots that are not in this. The majority, uh, those are the ones where management need to spend more time. You no, know, you don't, maybe you don't need to visit every site every week if they are consistently doing a good job. Maybe you should focus on the ones that need more help. Yeah, so, good. so that's that's kind of where ROI kicks in is when you have a high and consistent use of the tool that you can trust. Mm. Then you can start all the fun stuff, you know, automate, yeah. uh, uh, make things better when it comes to how do you spend your time? Uh, yeah, all that. But it's kind of, you need to set the, the basics first. Yeah, interesting, really insightful. I like that approach as well, keeping it simple, starting off with the basics. And then I think, you know, we've discussed this before that once technology is, or once, 
people are using technology, you know, and you've created a bit of a culture for it, then it's very easy to sort of build from that within the business, right? Yeah. I mean, people, um, I, don't, I don't know how many times Instagram uh, gives you an app update, but nobody cares. I mean, you, no, exactly. you just keep using it. And that's the same with, with any mobile tool that people are, you know, used to, it changes and it gets better over time. And that's just the way it is. So. Yeah. Great. No, it's very insightful. Okay, cool. Um, I think we may have some questions. So let me just jump back here. Have a quick look. How are we doing on time? Yeah, a few minutes for that. Okay, yeah, we've still, got, yep. we've still got some time. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some questions here, Peter. Um, yep. What sets compliance apart from a simple checklist app? I think it's I the think it, one of the yeah, good it's a good, 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 good question. Uh, I mean, of course, basically it does the same things. When uh, when you you know pull it up in the morning, I mean. A checklist is a checklist, right? So, yeah. uh, so that's uh, on the on the face of it, no difference. But when you start to dig into the different areas that we cover, for example, like food safety, uh, you depending on, of course, how mature you are. But you have the HACCP, you have the uh, directive corrective action flows, you have things like that. You know, there's a lot of things around food safety that are well. Uh, uh, just a checklist is not really good enough. There are uh, you might be ISO, you might have alcohol licenses, things like that, uh, that you really need to, you, it's important that you can show the, uh, the logs and they can do it in a good way. So it's, even though it might look like a simple checklist for the end user, that's of course a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some more complexity around uh, legal requirements that you, you want to have in place, I would say. So it's both yes and no. Yeah, it's a, it should be as easy as a checklist, but it should also be more, you know, configuration stuff that you need to do to, to really comply to the laws. And of course, the auditing side of it as well, right? Yeah, of and course, yeah. That built into the same app has got to be... Yeah, I mean, the audit is also a simple checklist, but, you know, getting them to play together so that yeah. when the audit is done, it results in actions for the site. You can track that centrally. Exactly. Yeah, so so it's still, it's, yeah, it's simple checklist, but the engine under those checklists are a bit more complex. Okay, cool. Great. Let me have a look. Um, what should organizations do to prepare for implementing compliance? Uh, they should have like a good standardized uh, concept. What do we call it? Like uh, they should know how they want to work. If, if they know that, if they have like this clear vision of this is how uh, I know how to launch a site. I know how to onboard an employee. I know how to then it's kind of prime for uh, digitalizing your business. If you're not sure, pen and paper is great for tryout. I mean, it's uh, very easy to change. Okay, cool. Um, well, That's a good one. What kind of health and safety issues does compliance address? Yeah, this, this might become a bit boring for <laughs> operational people, but it's not talking about HACCP now. Yeah, it's, it's all these, you know, you have the risk assessments, you have the critical control points that need to have different uh, steps to document. Maybe if uh, temperature is not okay, that is more critical than that you don't have an opening sign on the door that says at what time you open. So it's about configuring those part of the system uh, are a bit more complex to configure because uh, food safety is a bit more complex than you know checking if a campaign is in place and did I get the right promotion material. Uh, if, if you miss on that, maybe it's it's important because you lose uh, some revenue. But uh, but if you're on the food safety side, it's more like you lose your license, or it's a different uh, complexity in that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, another one here: Is there a limit to the amount of sites that compliance can manage? Good question. I hope that I will find out one day. But <laughs> uh, so far, I haven't. Uh, I think it's about. 4,000 sites are using it today. Okay. And our largest customer is have about 900 sites. Okay, wow. So uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's like any other cloud solution that it's, uh, it's very scalable. So it's, it's not really, a, 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 for, we use Microsoft to host in the solution. So it's more about turning up the, the Microsoft bill and the Microsoft server dial to host more sites. So uh, I, I, I think not is the, and I haven't seen any limits yet to that. Okay, good. Great. 
Um, let me see. I think quite a few of these questions have already been answered. Um, should an operator invest in compliance before, during, or after a period of extended growth? Well, it's... It... I think looking back back at the, I would have said like, okay, it's good. To, if you were asked me three, four years ago, I said, okay, it's better you have started the growth pattern and then you digitize. Yeah. But after working with Basta Burgers, I'm actually inclined to say, okay, quite early, given that you have that mindset. Because it's actually, of course, it's easier to set a digital tool in the hands of four restaurants or five than 180. So, yeah, the, yeah. so if, you, if you have the concept defined and everything is kind of, you know, you're sure about what you're doing, then you're ready. Uh, and that could be five sites or it could be 50 sites. I don't know. But okay. it's, uh, so uh, when, when uh, you, you know when you're ready. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, exactly. you know when if, if I ask you, okay, could you give me the, the checklist for opening and closing in front of a back of house? And say, of course, psh, if you get that in five seconds, then you're ready. If it's like, well, uh, mm, let me see, where is that ver the latest version? I have to check with that guy. Yeah. You're probably not ready. No, you're probably not. Okay, good. Fair, fair answer. Um, I think maybe time for one more. How many different checklists and organizational systems can compliance replace? Oh, that's a really good question because yeah. it's not really up to me to answer because the system is, um, I mean, how, how many different documents can you write in Microsoft Office? How many like, different folders do you have on your shelf? Yeah, yeah, it's like it's up to you. So, I mean, within... It's it's our, our our super users define that themselves. So they create like a food safety module, a fire safety, a workplace safety, um, whatever kind of certifications they need to track. So they kind of build their own system uh, okay. based on the structure that we have. So I think the most I think about which customer using it the most. I'll say five or six different systems. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because they usually also integrate with you know their IT stuff, so they can kind of do that. So I think it. I don't really know the answer to that. Each, uh, yes, yeah, each, each 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 operator is going to be different, right? Yeah, and they just, they create their own processes in our tool. So it's it's up to I don't. I, I, it's not we, we. It's like you don't call Microsoft to get help to write the new document. You do it yourself. Yeah, so sure. It's, uh, yeah. Fair. Okay, I think we've got a couple of quick fire ones before we go. Can pictures be uploaded? For example, the area of the location platform is being used. Are there any limits? Yeah, no, it's just like you would expect from any mobile. You take a picture and that's it. It's sent to the server and uh, server space is not expensive. So it's, there are no limits on pictures no limits. or videos or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and pictures are used quite a lot, actually, especially yeah, for, yeah, like, you know, uh, tomorrow I want to see, hopefully, uh, well, uh, we won't see this again, but at, uh, a year ago, like, I want to take a photo of the COVID floor markers, you know, tomorrow. I want to see that everybody has done that. Mm -hmm. Those kind of quick things where you need a, you know, you need a visual on it. That's really useful to yeah, you know, okay. send out tasks like that and get the response back as photos from each site. And be able to check the consistency. Yeah, of it. exactly. It could be campaigns or it could be, you know, uh, whatever. Promotions. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. Um, does the app geotag the location and timestamp? It timestamps. It does not geotag uh, because of uh, GDPR Okay. Uh, at the moment uh, because we had some um, concerns about that with the unions. So it's it's not a technical. Um, we, no. can, we, we can switch on that. But, it's a legality, yeah. Yeah, it's legality. So it's uh, it might do. It might be something that we today we can't separate that per country, but maybe we should. Maybe it's different from different countries. Yeah, it's actually okay, good cool. good input, but uh, there will be some some union resistance to to that. Yeah, cool. Great. Listen, Peder. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. It's been great speaking to you. Um, thank you, Harry. Thank you so much for for joining, and thank you everybody for joining. Um, and watching the webinar. If you've got any questions or if you'd like to reach out to us, both Pedro and I are, are on LinkedIn. We'd be happy to, to answer any questions or have any conversations around the compliance application by MAPAL. Um, and I think for that, it's for me to say thank you very much. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in Stockholm soon for a nice gourmet burger. <laughs> you will. Uh, the, the weather will be better at the time, I promise. Yeah, Not minus we're six. We're yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> Brilliant. Great, Pedro. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Harry. Cheers. Bye-bye.